Now today I thought we should have a little bit of a change of scenery. Get away from the super fast stuff, get away from the supercars and the super estates and test something that I've wanted to drive ever since I heard that it came out. And that is the new Land Rover Defender. Now, if anyone follows me on Instagram, at Christian Elvidge or at Motorflix Films, then they will know that I actually own an original Land Rover Defender. And it's rubbish to drive. It goes wrong all the time. The electrics go wrong all the time. The tires whine on the motorway. It's slow as hell. There's absolutely no steering feel. There's, it's, it's, it's rubbish, but I absolutely adore it. Now, what I wanted to know was, has the new Defender encapsulated any of that magic that everyone loves an old Defender. So, this car at £60,000, this one is a diesel, it's uh, one of the smaller engines in the range. It's pretty gutless, I will be totally honest with you, it doesn't feel like it's particularly strong. That's my foot flat on the floor now, not a lot happening. It's, yeah, it gets on and it's, you know, we're doing 60 miles an hour on a country road in the Cotswolds. And it is, it's plenty, it's plenty. I don't understand why they're going to make an SVR version of this car because at no point have I thought, oh, do you know what? I'd like to really, really hustle a Land Rover Defender. It's pointless, no idea why. But I suppose G-Wagon, G63, who needs a G63? They used to be not that good to drive. They're now much better, but still, who needs that? Now, the interior on this car, the second you get in it, I do appreciate the hints towards the old Defender. The Defender in the dashboard, the little cubby hole here that you can put all your things. You get in the car, you literally grab the keys or whatever, and you sling them into the dashboard. It's all rubber and it's all, you know, non-slip and that, again, that's great. You know, if you're someone that just jumps in a car and slings things in, if you're a yummy mummy that's doing things in the back with the kids and things like that, then, you know, you're just going to chuck stuff into the, into the dash. Brilliant. Love that. All the display. Very nice. It's all digital display. It's much like an Audi or a Golf or anything like that. Things that you, they love doing at the moment with the, you know, looking like you're flying a fighter jet. That's all in there. All of the infotainment system, this iPad situation down here, lovely, seems to work really, really nicely. Way better than a Discovery 4. The amount of charging points in this car is absurd. I have counted, oh, I can see four from where I'm sat. There are two in the headrests in the back. There's a three pin plug in the boot. There's another, I don't know. I, I honestly, I keep, I keep finding stuff. I mean, there's a, there's a fridge. It's up to date and, you know, I've actually had to use a couple of them. We needed to charge one of the drone batteries, so we charge them in the boot whilst I'm driving around, whilst we're driving from one spot to the next. That's brilliant. If you're a photographer or a videographer or someone that needs to be charging things on the go, fantastic, I can think of no better car. This sort of, I want to think that it's wipeable material but I don't think it is. I think it would become quite grubby quite quickly. But it feels, I like again that this arcs back to the, the Defenders of old. And you know, you've got some, some stitching in here that's like cotton, all of the rivets in the door. It feels utilitarian and it feels like you would happily go away on an adventure sort of holiday if that's the sort of thing you like doing. And this car would be a companion. It would make your it would make your journey better and more exciting and more adventurous. This one has the very, very silly pannier thing on the side of the car. It's also super irritating that it's on the right hand side because it effectively gives you a massive blind spot in your wing mirror. I know there's a car behind me now, but I can't actually see him by just a flick of my eyes. I have to I have to check. That's really irritating. It's not something I'd put on there. Who needs a pannier on the outside of your car? Nobody. The roof rails, the roof rack, 
it's industrial, it looks quite cool. I imagine that you give quite a lot away for fuel economy, but if you want to put canoes or bicycles or whatever you want to put on the roof, that would do the job beautifully. There are grab handles bloody everywhere. I mean, it's great. You get in, there's a grab handle here, big, sturdy, manly grab handle. There's a grab handle in the back to get in. There's grab handles here. I don't know why, what driver's gonna be grabbing this handle? That's weird. But, you know, fine, very good. The rear view mirror as well is super cool. So if you've got this fully laden and you, you know, you've got it full of stuff to go on your adventuring camping trip somewhere that God forbid you'd have to sleep on the floor or something. But when you've got it fully laden, you just flip this little button and it becomes a screen. <laughs> like it's, and it's, you can see so far, you can see wide and it's a bit weird to start with, but it actually works really nicely and you become quite used to it. I quite like that. I think that's a, that's a really clever thing that Land Rover have done before anyone else. Someone will probably say now that you can probably get it on a Kia or something, but I don't care. It's really good on this one, but it is nicer to have it on normal. The exterior of the car. I again, I quite like it. I like the flat lines at the back. I like the lights. I like the lights on the front and the rear. I like the checker plate on the bonnet. I like the 110 silly sticker or whatever that is. I like the look of it. I think it looks cool. I think it looks like an updated modern version of a Discovery 4. Now, I genuinely think that that is the sort of market that this car should be going for. It's not going for the old Defender market. It maybe shouldn't be called the new Defender. It should be called the new, I don't know, Discovery Adventure or something. I, I, I don't know, because it's not a Discovery Sport because they're just not cool. It's not a Discovery 5 because they're as ugly as sin. It's somewhere in between the two. And I, I just think that this, this is for that person that wants the convenience of a big car but wants to also look cool in it. This is effectively, this is an amazing laptop, this car. It's, you know, it's doing something like 20 million different things at once, but it is extremely clever. All comes up on, on here when you're going off-roading and, you know, doing things that you probably shouldn't be doing in such an expensive car. The air suspension on this car is lovely. The ride is super supple. It's really, really clever the way it goes up and down. You can press the little road mode, which is there, and then you can put it in off-road mode and it goes up by a long way. I'm talking like, it looks like nearly a foot. I mean, it's incredible. Um, and then you can waft around off-road, which we've done a little bit of this morning. Yeah, it's, that's, that's brilliant. And just to know that you can do all of those things is super cool. You know, if you own a Bugatti Veyron, for instance, you never ever are gonna go 260 miles an hour but it's nice to know it's there, you know? The young family, they're gonna go out and they're gonna go through a puddle in the countryside occasionally. It's nice to know that it all weighed up to its, up to its door handles. They're never gonna do it, but what are you gonna do? That again, it's off-road capabilities. This car has some silly Scorpion road tires on it, but all of the other gubbins for it to go and do a you know climb pike's peak or something i don't know why you would spec it like that you're going to be on the road most of the time spec it as a road car don't spec it as an off-road car this is a, a road car that is capable off-road the old defender was an off-road car that could go on a road simple as that really the dynamics of this car steering feel doesn't really exist there isn't any uh it's it's fine the steering wheel itself and the touch points of this car i hate this plastic on the steering wheel i hate it it just feels horrible the brakes are so over servo assisted i don't know why they've done that either so you immediately you stop way too hard occasionally that's fine i got out of my old defender which is like throwing an anchor out of the boot when you want to brake so maybe it's because of that this has a stereo that works. I mean, my stereo and my Defender, you turn it up too loud, 
the doors start rattling, the windows start rattling, you can't really hear what's being said, it becomes completely tinny and completely pointless. So you have to listen to it on very, very low, but you can sort of more or less make out what's being played. This one is absolutely fantastic. It's a Meridian unit in this one, wonderful. Again, if you don't already, subscribe to the channel, click the little ding, ding bell thing um, to be notified of any of these fantastic videos that are coming your way at the moment. Oh, look at this. Let's go and do a little bit of off-roading, shall we? Right, so off-roading. I want to leave it in that and I'm just going to press the little button here and you can literally up we go and it goes up at the front first and then it goes up at the rear and now I feel like an absolute boss. Let's go. Silly pannier that I can't see out the back. Ridiculous. I don't understand with this why with the gearbox they haven't it's a nice, it's a lovely gearbox on the road, um, and I'm sure with all of the, all of the gubbins on here that you can press, and the, all of the snow mode, the desert mode, the rutty mode, the wady mode, the, all of those different things, all the different off-road modes, all the diffs do different stuff, and all of that. I don't know why they haven't given you paddles with the gearbox so you can hold the gear. That seems odd to me. Why it's got sport mode with this pretty gutless little engine, I don't know. All of the buttons in here, rugged. You could press them with a glove on. Love that. We're just literally driving down a, a Cotswold stone, off-roady, sort of gravelly, sandy road. And this car is, it deals with it beautifully. I would like to take this skiing, put some knobblies on it. And yeah, I think it would be, I think it'd be great fun. I like it. I like it. I can see myself driving one of these every day. Now. One thing I would say with the whole Land Rover range, I don't know if anyone else will agree with this, but there are a few of them that have a bit of a identity crisis, if you will. Now, the Evoque is predominantly owned by hairdressers um, or people that think they should buy a Range Rover and want to buy a Range Rover, but can't either afford a Range Rover or they, don't want something as big as a real Range Rover. The Range Rover Sport, I, I love a Range Rover Sport. I think they look the best in the range and I think they drive the best in the range. They're great. The big Range Rover, again, super cool. The Velar or Velour or whatever it's called. Again, that's, that's a bit of a, for me, that's a bit of a look how much money I have, but I don't really want a big Range Rover. This I don't think is in any of that. I think this is in a category of its own. I think this is in the category that the guy driving it would feel like a boss and go off-roading and go mountain biking and get muddy and throw his wellies in the back and take the dogs and do all of that. But then on the weekdays, it would do the school run and all of that, and it would do it absolutely without a problem at all. So we're just getting to a little bit here of a bit more tricky, it's not tricky, but there we go, over some wool bumps. No problemo, look at this, oh yeah. Into a field, it's all we need, isn't it? It's all you need, you don't need to go, I'm not gonna go green laning in it, because that would be absurd. But we've driven around a beautiful field in the countryside. And, you know, this is probably more likely to be seen at the Beaufort Polo or Sirencester Park you know, waving at Prince Harry and William than it is to be seen green laning with a load of yobbos in old Discovery 2s. For me, this car is for a young family that has a few quid, that has two kids, two dogs, and likes to go away on the weekend. I think if you're that person and you want to drive across a field or ford through a couple of little streams to get to your campsite or to get to your you know expensive little shack at Soho farmhouse I think this is the car for you I think it's wicked I think it's really really nice but is it anything to do with the old Defender absolutely not no it, it's not at all it's a completely different thing but Land Rover are using the fact that it has Land Rover DNA to say that this is the utility car that you should buy. And I honestly think, you know, they've done a really fantastic job and I really like it. 
I could see myself having one of these defenders when I have kids for the dogs. Absolutely no bother at all. I think it's great. I'm really impressed by. Yeah, I'm really impressed by it. I think um, that's that's the sort of person that should be that should be looking at buying one of these.